Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. I'm senior health reporter Anjali Kimlani here in San Francisco at the annual JP Morgan Healthcare Conference. And here to kick it off, kick it off with me is Eli Lilly CEO Dave Ricks to talk about, of course, to start off with your absolutely runaway year anticipated this year. Thanks for joining us today. Let's talk about this. Great so, to be with you. Yeah, you know, GLP ones, absolutely the talk of the town. We're still talking about it at the start of the year after a record year last year with Manjaro, Zepbound being approved. What can you tell us about how this is all coming together for the company? Because you really you really shot the firing gun in 2005 with Bayetta. That's right. We've been in this space a long time, as you mentioned. You said GLP ones, but now we're actually adding other hormone, gut hormones, uh, incretins we call them, uh, together. So terzepatide, which is Manjaro and Zepbound, is two modes of action, GIP and GLP. And in the pipeline, we have another one coming with three modes of action. So you can see we're now learning how to exploit this biology to really um, affect a whole number of metabolic diseases. So last year was about the launch of Zepbound introduction. That happened in the fall, I think uh, going well so far. Uh, Manjaro had a great year as well in diabetes. Trilicity, our older product, continues to do well. Uh, this year, I think, will be about uh, some of the uh, new data releases as we study these drugs, not just to demonstrate they lose weight, which people, almost everybody loses weight, but what happens to your broader health. We're studying a population with congestive heart failure, uh, a specific subtype called HEF-F, which is um, a partial injection fraction. And that's really driven by obesity, so we're really anxious to get those results sometime in the second half. And then also a condition called sleep apnea, which is a common condition that uh, almost 10 million Americans have, that we think we can reduce those signs and symptoms of sleep apnea by losing weight on terzepatide. So that, this will be now the next step to translate those health benefits. Uh, with great weight loss. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly something we're all looking at, right, is how much more can you get? What other diseases can get benefited by the work that you've been doing? I also know that you launched Lily Direct. Um, you're trying to get to the consumers. We saw how much of a run you had on just Manjaro alone last year. Uh, these drugs are in high demand. You're running out uh, yeah. at some points in the year. So launching Lily Direct, getting to the consumer, directly to them with Zepbound first and then a couple other of your diabetes drugs. What is the goal? Who are, are you trying to cut out the pharmacies and the PBMs here? We're not trying to cut out anyone. We're happy to work with all those players. What we're trying to do is optimize the patient experience. And we listen carefully to the patients that are, want to use our drugs or are using our drugs. They're pretty frustrated with the state of U.S. healthcare and how it works for them. So we're trying, with Lilly Direct, trying to do three things. One is the direct part, which is uh, get supplies or products from a manufacturer directly. That's an experience we all have in many parts of our life. And some people prefer it. Um, I would say in particular, people with obesity, who um, when they go out into the world are often shamed for the way they look. Um, many people don't consider obesity a health condition. Um, they get blowback at the pharmacy counter, et cetera. So they in particular like the discretion of getting that product directly. Secondly, telehealth, which a lot of Americans had experience with in COVID, and some don't like and some do. So here we're serving up a partner um, uh, in uh, different disease states, actually three different partners, who are uh, good at telehealth and people have a place to land to get that. And why do we do that? Because you know we've worked with them in various ways to make sure the quality of the programs are very high. And so Lilly can be a trusted source to get that telehealth uh, provided. Absolutely. And then you know I think the other thing I would say is in particular with obesity, here again, uh, patients report kind of doctor shopping to find someone who will write them what they know is a solution for their health problem. Um, and so here it's just more convenient. It's not just though telehealth. We have a doctor finder tool on our site so you can put in your zip code and find out who is a certified obesity specialist in your area. And access to healthcare and that, no that knowledge gap with, with patients and the healthcare system is pretty vast in the US. So here's a way to bring that closer together. Well, it's certainly an, an interesting play, one we haven't seen before from a legacy pharma player. So we'll have to see what the response is to that and, and whether or not pay, uh, patients actually see it. Uh, you also are having a pretty good year, your stock up uh, in the last yeah. year. Sorry, it's a new year. So it's a new goes year. To zero. <laughs> that we have is to do it again. Yeah. 
yeah. <laughs> it resets. Yeah. But you had a good run. Yeah. Uh, really, re reaching record highs. You've been sort of on a slow climb since the pandemic. You're involved with products there. And now with the obesity space, you have a lot more going for you. Yeah. What are you looking at next? How do you sort of, you know, give back shareholder value in all of this? And, and how do you justify all that? Yeah, well, I think we've, uh, and I'll talk tomorrow at this conference, I, I think if you're an investor and you're looking at Lilly and you're thinking this is a Zepbound Manjaro story, I don't think you're reading it right. Um, I think we've been a, on a, as you mentioned, a, a long climb and um, it's really driven by the productivity of our R&D organization. So um, I think a bet on Lilly is to bet we can keep inventing new things, not just sell the ones we have invented, which are great as well. Additionally, um, one of the features of how we've built our R&D engine is one that can innovate inside of a timeline that's shorter than your patent life. And of course, we all know at this conference, you always hear about, okay, who's got a patent cliff coming and what, what deal do they have to do to make up for that? We wanna get out of that business. And the way to do that is to launch products faster than you lose them. That's how we grow. In our industry, everything we launch will go to zero someday, even Manjaro and, and Zepbound, right? So we need to create something better faster than that event. And we've been able to do that. Uh, if you look at Trulicity, our GLP-1 once weekly, which launched in 2014, and then in 2022, just eight years later, inside the patent life, we launched Manjaro, which is by all means a, probably a better product for that. And then probably in 2026 or 27, we'll launch Retatrutide, just five years after that, which is probably gonna be a better product than that. So that sort of serial innovation and rapid innovation is something we're very focused on. And then the other part of the story is success across not just weight loss and diabetes, but other areas. You mentioned COVID. We were, uh, I think, the largest seller of COVID antibodies in the U.S. during the crisis. We're proud to do that and, and save probably 30 or 40,000 lives with those. But um, in oncology, we're making moves and growing that portfolio of target oncology beyond Verzenio, which is our blockbuster breast cancer drug, really the only uh, CDK46 indicated in adjuvant, which can be a curative setting. Uh, but we're building a pipeline of, I think, really exciting molecules in oncology, along with uh, Alzheimer's, with, uh, we do expect a approval early this year for donunumab and Alzheimer's, uh, and immunology, important products like Tults and Illumian and uh, Ombau just launched for Crohn's and colitis. A lot of, yeah. a really diverse portfolio. And at a time where generally, let's go to broader the market, you know, a lot of companies are looking at where to make the moves next, especially with all the pressure you're seeing from DC. There's general uh, sort of contraction, I think a little bit in how people are thinking about where to go, what's what's beneficial, what you can get into without really getting penalized or getting into trouble. How do you think about that space right now? You're probably referencing the IRA, but yeah. also I think the broader sort of regulatory environment around the world for our industry is tightening, it's true. Uh, I think that has two primary effects. One is um, product life cycles will be shorter. I just commented on our strategy, which is to be faster than the life cycle. So we're moving even faster um, so that we can launch successive innovation before something like a, a government negotiation in the US, which is the IRA issue, or uh, shorter patent lives, which are happening. There's a debate in Europe about that, for instance. So that's how we inoculate ourselves against that. The second thing is, um, the world's a wash in choice. What used to be branded drugs are now generic and very cheap, and we have to make better and better medicines. That threshold of improvement is going up. I think people expect even more impact from the next medicine. So we have to change how we invest, which is to really demand that the, when we put our money behind a phase three program, and those are billion, two billion dollar tickets, that it's gonna really change that field of medicine. That's the question we ask ourselves. When we do that, sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong. Um, we end up with a good medicine, we want it great. But I think it, it allows us to compete in a tougher future for biopharma. And then a final question for you. Going back to the GLP-1 space, lots of interest, lots of competitors coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. I know you're talking about how you're differentiating by targeting different disease states, as well as getting that timeline faster, like you mentioned. How are you planning to keep the market share though? Because there are a lot of people interested. There's orals coming, I know you have that too. So there's so many different options that are gonna be coming down the pike. And that's great for patients. I think that's sort of how the industry works. When there's a big success, everyone will pile in and follow. I think the question, if you look at historic performance is, will we be the leader who, who gave up the lead or will we um, exploit the lead, leaving, there'll be room for others in various niches and so forth. So of course we want the second, 
And we're doing that, as I talked about, with successive innovation. We've got retatritide in phase three, or yep. Forglipron, the oral, right. which is the most advanced oral program out there. We have six other clinical stage assets in obesity and the various manifestations. And I think that's where the game will turn next, is who's indicated for what? Um, how can we prove value, not just in weight loss? Yes, we need, we need drugs that provide more weight loss. That's Rotatutide's promise. Potentially 25 or even 30% weight loss, which is about what bariatric surgery you can do. But also, what have you proven in terms of downstream health consequences? That's where payers around the world are looking for that value. And I expect that envelope of indications to expand. Today, we're pursuing something like a dozen different indications uh, for our portfolio of obesity medications. That will get wider and wider through time. Uh, and I think that's exciting you know, for the health of the world. If you look at adult health, there are so many things tied to excess body weight. And we're just beginning to learn, by the way, all the ways to use these drugs together or in sequence how to get people on lower doses or even off medication eventually to get those benefits. Uh, I think it's gonna be an exciting decade ahead for innovation with uh, weight loss. Absolutely, well, good thing you're, uh, you got a lead on that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to leave it there. Eli Lilly, CEO, Dave Ricks, thank you so much for joining Great us. Great to be today. with you, thanks.